it's time to unify or now have the divine union of male and female energies. We've experienced the polarities of being a woman, being a man, and the male, the masculine, the outgoing, and the feminine, open receiving. But there's male and feminine energies in all of us. So we're now coming to be more androgynous, which is integrating the male and female energies. And as females, I mean, we've had the suffragettes, then we've had the feminists, which is really not very feminine. Um, and But now it's time to recognize those qualities and integrate them. Like, I grew up like a little tomboy with two brothers terrorizing me. And, but I learned how to hold my own as a female. I was like one of the boys. And then going to Hong Kong and being a stockbroker. So again, in a man's world, um, but I've always got on very well with men because, you know, I grew up with two brothers and a lot of my friends who went to boarding school, say an all girls school, she says, how can you be friends with men? You know, so to them, they either had to be a partner, a lover, or they could never be friends with a man. I have a lot of male friends. And um, I found that quite strange, but I do understand it. So we can draw on both the female and the male qualities. Anyway, when I became really male doing the stockbroking thing and uh, carrying around a briefcase and all that, I just thought, oh, it's still too hard, you know, I want to be female again. <laughs> so then started to um, be more receptive, more receiving, you know, and to start loving myself more, which is becoming more feminine. So, and, but along the way, my mother used to hate my father. I mean, pure hate. She would talk about him constantly and it made my stomach churn. I, I, oh, it, it just felt awful because, you know, my father's part of me. Why did she hate him so much? And so I think it was very old, you know, the old patriarchal society, and there was such a division between men and women, you know. And I know a lot of women that have hated men and a lot of men that have hated women. And it's time now to end the polarity. We've both experienced both polarities but now it's time and I realized you know my mother by hating men by being afraid of men she was cutting off like 50% of humanity <laughs> that you weren't communicating with because you were afraid I think afraid and hating them so it's time to let that go and realize we're all human beings. We're all souls having different experiences. And I've never found one awful man or one awful woman that I could hate. Um, we're all just innocent little children of God running around. <laughs> and so being loving, accepting, and appreciating the differences or integrating the differences we, we think we might have and coming into balance like male-female energy, bring it into balance. And sometimes we might want to draw more on our female energy sometimes more on our male energy but integrating it we you know become very powerful you can use use it both 
and so no division now integration appreciation I mean I love all my male friends they different qualities and I love all my female friends it's different qualities that we have to give to each other so instead of feeling separate and different like men are from Mars and women are from Venus I I think that's just beliefs and ideas we got along the way I think integrating ourselves we're all just beautiful souls beautiful people and um, gay people you know I have many many gay friends and they have both female and male energy as well I mean we're all souls just having different experiences and being a, a gay man uh, may have wanted to experience rejection judgment in order to take your power back and grow from that experience you know bring your spirit back and I met many gay friends who are just amazing and so creative and just so wonderful and so it's learning to love ourselves all aspects of ourselves because you can't sit here and say I hate him he did this you're hating and cutting out your whole male side you know that you can use so let the judgment go and appreciate all aspects of everybody and all aspects of ourselves and we've had like 26,000 years of male patri patriarchy or whatever you say male domination and now we've just shifted into the female the feminine and the females now coming back into their own power after years of being put down especially in places like the Middle East and you know, so I see people waking up now and women aren't going to be treated as second-class citizens anymore. And certainly you never had to, you just don't have to. So it's time for waking up now. And, um, and I think I see a lot of men too who were very domineering and out there and, uh, in the business world too. And they're now coming into much more of their feminine energy where they're honoring the feminine and giving to the feminine. And it's so beautiful to see. I mean, a beautiful man with feelings and being sensitive is so attractive to a woman. So we're seeing a big transition now and it's um, it's really nice to see so I would say let go of judgment and these movements where they say men are bad or you know I just no nobody's bad or it's just people having different experiences and everybody is just perfect and all just little leaves in the trees as we, you know, have different experiences. So by integrating the male and the female, you know, there's benefits in both. And now it's time for that integration and loving, accepting, joining, just so we can all unite in love it's a divine union the marriage now of male and female and no judgment on gay people women men we're finding now um, the laws are changing we can have um, marriages and partnerships of two gay people and so the world shifting out of that old judgment condemnation and shame of being different and people we're just seeing each one of our 
other human beings as you know perfect in whatever unique way we present ourselves we're all souls just having a experience so just opening our hearts now to love and seeing the innocence of all souls we're just little children of God you know the source and we can all just love let the past go now any awful experiences you may have had you chose that experience you've never been a victim and once you accept that responsibility and let any trapped emotions any old anger, resentments, um, and you may have been terrorized, you may have been persecuted, and sometimes it's harder when you decide you're going to come and have these experiences. It's harder to play the baddie than the goodie. <laughs> and so it takes a great soul to love you enough to play the bad person. And I know when my first husband died, um, I was talking to a medium and she says, so Terry's here and he's saying, I experienced him as very challenging and he died of sclerosis of the liver. He was very domineering, very six foot two, very masculine. And, but he wanted, he loved me so much that he, wanted me to ignite my feeling. I'd lost my expression, I'd given up in my previous lifetime. So he was here to make me so angry, to get in touch with my primal rage. He certainly did that. I, I kept quiet for 15 years and then one day this rage just came up and I picked up a bottle and started hitting him over the head. and. Uh, and a voice said, if you hit him again, you'll kill him. I, ah, drop the bottle. And so he served me, and I didn't see it at the time, but he did that out of intense love for me as a soul. So often we don't get the full picture. We don't get the full perspective of what, is really going on so but when you see all sides of the story and his agreement to help me and my mother to terrorize me and bait me until I got really angry and said well I'll show her I'll make something of myself <laughs> you know um, so no judgment it's both of you agreeing to have that experience and honestly, when you don't have to punish yourself anymore, because I was really punishing myself, feeling I'm unlovable and unworthy, and not liking myself, it's sort of like a self-hatred, then you draw in people to punish you. And so now I don't need that anymore. Nobody comes into my life to do that now. I just attract loving people because that's where my vibration has risen to. So if you see it like a radio frequency or scales, you know, you're, we're all at different levels of consciousness. And so we can start off feeling, you know, unlovable and unworthy. And this is the biggest challenge in the universe to come here, forget everything, experience the darkness, feeling separate, how it is to be unlovable and unworthy, and then to rise up through the ranks, through the vibration. So then you can become a major wealth of information. And that's a very valuable commodity to have. So you can then help people evolve because you can relate to every experience because you've had it, you've been there. You know what it's like to be stuck, being afraid of, I was afraid of my first husband and so full of fear that 
I just couldn't leave. I was, it was like I was paralyzed. And then just one morning a voice said, it's time to go, you know, he's going to burn the house down. And um, two years later his house burnt down. And so I just thought, I have to get my children out of there. So we're having these experiences and there's no good or bad. It all just is. It's only our judgment. He's bad, she's good, he's wrong, you know, no judgment. And so he had really a, a hard journey, but it benefited me immensely to wake me up and and find my rage, which now has turned into creativity. You know, because I'm not afraid of my rage now, because there's no build-up. I've released everything. And so, you know, we can thank people that we think are our enemies, or we might stay in a lifetime of hatred, but that's really not the case. So, forgiving or letting go really it's nothing to forgive but there was one lady an old Indian lady I think she was you know 65 70 and she'd been forced into a marriage in India an arranged marriage and her husband had been dead for 20 years and she was still angry and resentful and I had a, a talk to her and she got this. I explained to her, well, he's been dead for 20 years. You're not punishing him. You're really destroying the rest of your life by being angry and bitter. When she came out, she was smiling like a two-year-old child. And her family said, what on earth did you do with her? And um, she said, well, we just let go of the anger and resentment of the arranged marriage. And that was years out of her life, years out of my mother's life, hating my father. And so it's just a waste of energy. It takes a lot of energy to be angry and resentful and pointing the finger. You're a bad person. I'm the good person. No, we're not good or bad. We're just people experiencing different polarities. So do take that into consideration and really start honoring the feminine, honoring the male and bringing love and acceptance into our relationships. You know, it's all just misunderstandings that happen and we're all looking through a filter of what happened to us previously. So once we can let go of the emotional charges around that, we can love everybody. Really, we can love everybody. And just seeing the innocence in each person. And then we come back on the path of love and joy to live an ennobled life, a life of joy. That's what we were all destined to have. But I'm glad I went down to the depths and experienced the darkness, experienced hatred, experienced wanting to kill my first husband. <laughs> I did, I really did. And now I know that was an experience and that's where it can take you to if you have repressed hatred and anger. So... Um, but then a wonderful experience to come out of that and to then live in love and joy. So let's honor each other and be kind and compassionate and find our joy and love again.